Ladies and gentlemen, there's something in this room today between you and me that is dark and elusive. Allow me to shed some light on this matter today. We live in a galaxy called the Milky Way, which is full of billions and billions of stars. And like the Milky Way, there are billions and billions of galaxies. For example, the Andromeda Galaxy, which is the nearest large galaxy to us. And the Pinwheel Galaxy, a beautiful galaxy that even looks like a pinwheel, a spiral galaxy. Now, why do we have such pretty pictures of galaxies? That's because they're full of stars. And stars are full of hydrogen and helium gas, just like our sun. And this hydrogen and helium gas has electrons, protons, and neutrons that interact with each other and produce electromagnetic radiation or light. However, numerous studies of galaxies have shown us that there's a lot more matter in these galaxies than we can see. Now, you and I can see an object either because it emits light, like the sun, or the tube light in this room, or because it reflects light or scatters light like the moon or my body, which is scattering the light coming from these lamps in the room. So the material in these, in these galaxies neither emits light nor scatters light or does so very feebly, and we refer to this as dark matter. Now, is this a small, irrelevant amount of matter? In which case, why am I here talking about it? It turns out, no. The amount of dark matter in each galaxy is 10 times the luminous matter. That is, 90% of each galaxy is made up of stuff that you cannot see. Now, further studies about these galaxies, about the formation of galaxies, have also indicated to us that the dark matter in the galaxy actually extends to far beyond the edge of the visible galaxy. We call this distribution of dark matter that pervades the galaxy and extends out as the dark matter halo. In this picture, what you see, the light blue region corresponds to the dark matter halo. And centrally situated is the luminous bright galaxy. Note that the dark matter distribution extends not just outside the galaxy, but also within the galaxy. Now, what is this dark matter? The answer is, we actually do not know. Note that the discovery of the existence of dark matter is not something new. We have known about it since the 1930s. And for the last 80 years, we have been searching to find out what is the dark matter. What I'll be talking to you about is what are the different attempts that are going on today to discover the dark matter. Well, there are very many ideas and theories about what could constitute the dark matter. One hypothesis is that it consists of some new undiscovered particle, which interacts very weakly with other standard matter and is stable, and that's why it hasn't decayed until to today. Such weakly interacting massive particles, of course, go by the name of WIMPs. Now, how do you catch a WIMP? How do you detect a WIMP? In this diagram, what you see is a picture of the dark matter halo, and centrally situated is the Milky Way galaxy. There's a central bulge, and then there's the disk going around the central bulge. The solar system is in the disk, and it goes around the galaxy. Why, but while it's going around the galaxy, it's also going through the dark matter halo. So if you have sensitive detectors on the Earth that are looking for the dark matter, then in principle, you could detect the dark matter. Well, for the last several years or several decades, we have built these detectors on the Earth to look for dark matter. Or to be more precise, they're in the Earth. You see, all these dark matter detectors are underground. Because otherwise, you would get contamination from the signal coming from cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are energetic particles that are produced when stars explode, either in our galaxy or in galaxies beyond. And those particles come into our atmosphere, interact with the particles in the atmosphere, and produce a shower of particles. So we send our detectors underground, we locate them underground, so that the cosmic rays are not caught by our detectors. However, the dark matter particles, since they interact very feebly with regular matter, will go right through, and hopefully we'll catch them in our detector. In addition, 
while the solar system or the sun is going around the galaxy, the earth itself is, re is revolving around the sun. Therefore, there will be a variation in the velocity with which the earth is going through the dark matter halo. And so there are experiments looking for the annual modulation in the dark matter signal that you hope to detect in your detector. Now, these are examples of what we call direct detection. That is, you're directly trying to catch the dark matter particle that's there in the halo. But there are also examples of what we call indirect detection. Now, our ideas about dark matter indicate to us that regions of the galaxy, of the visible galaxy, where you have a larger concentration of matter, like the center of the galaxy, or let's say the sun, in those regions you might see a greater accumulation of the dark matter particles too. And in some scenarios, these dark matter particles in regions of higher concentration annihilate and produce a signal. So there are experiments looking for the signal coming from the annihilation of dark matter. This is referred to as indirect detection of dark matter. Now, so far, I've been talking about uh, searching for dark matter particles that are there in the halo, it's a naturally occurring dark matter. But can you produce it in the laboratory? Since the 1950s, the, the most uh, standard way of producing and discovering new particles has been by using colliders. What are colliders? Colliders are large machines in which you accelerate particles to very high velocities using electric and magnetic fields. And then when they're at very high speeds, bam, you collide them. And when they crash into each other, when they collide, you create new particles. In this cartoon, you see two particles, a proton and an antiproton, coming together and colliding and producing two new particles, a top particle and an anti-top particle. You may be familiar with Einstein's famous formula, E is equal to mc squared. What that tells us is that mass 2 is a form of energy. And in this reaction, what is happening is that the energy, the kinetic energy of the incoming particles is being converted into the mass energy of the new particles that have been created. The world's largest collider today is the Large Hadron Collider. This is an aerial view of the Large Hadron Collider. It's actually located 100 meters underground below the large circle that you see in this picture. It's 27 kilometers in length. It actually crosses the French-Swiss border four times in its journey uh, uh, along its circumference. In this collider, in the tube that extends underneath the ground, we accelerate protons to very, very high energies, such high energies and such high velocities that they complete 11,000 revolutions in one second. These particles are going close to the speed of light, and then, bam, we collide them. And we're hoping that we'll create the dark matter particle that way. Now, mind you, even if we do create the dark matter particle, we may not detect it in the detectors of the Large Hadron Collider because this dark matter particle doesn't interact very well with matter, with ordinary matter, and will go right through the detector. Then how will you detect it? Well, in such a reaction, we, believe, we know that the incoming energy should equal the outgoing energy. You will add up all the incoming energy, you will add up all the outgoing energy of the particles that you're detecting, and you'll see there's some missing energy. And that would be an indication that perhaps you have created the dark matter particle. In other experiments, what we look for is not the dark matter particle, but one of its sister particles, and if you, which you can detect in your detectors. And if you do detect one of those, then by understanding the properties of this sister particle, you get a better understanding of what is the dark matter particle itself. Now, so far, what I've been talking to you about is the WIMPs, the weakly interacting massive particles. These particles are about 100 times heavier than the, ma than the proton. But there are many other particles that have been proposed by scientists that could possibly be the dark matter candidate. One such particle is called the axion, actually named after a washing powder. We scientists are very creative. The axion is a light particle, much lighter than the proton, that interacts, it actually interacts with electromagnetic radiation and with electric and magnetic fields, but extremely feebly. And a very clever experiment to look for the axion is called the shining light through a wall experiment. 
in this experiment and in this picture that you see here, there's a laser on the extreme left. That's putting out a laser beam. This laser beam goes and hits a wall that's at the center of this slide and produces a bright spot there. But along the way, there is, uh, in the path of the laser beam, there's a strong magnetic field, which is indicated by the vertical blue lines. Most of the time, the laser beam will just go right through this magnetic field. But every once in a while, ever so rarely, the light from the laser beam will interact with this magnetic field and produce a dark matter particle, namely the axion. The axion will move forward and will come to the wall. But the axion doesn't interact with regular matter very much, and so it will go right through the wall and will now be on the other side of the wall where there's once again a strong magnetic field. The axion will interact with that strong magnetic field and produce light which will go forward and hit the screen on the extreme right. Hence the name shining light through a wall. So after all these different attempts or experiments on trying to discover the dark matter, what have we discovered so far? Unfortunately, after decades and decades of trying to look for dark matter, it's still not quite clear uh, whether we have detected the dark matter even and what it is. The experiments at the Large Hadron Collider have not seen the dark matter candidate, nor have they seen any of its sister particles. On the experiment of trying to shine light through a wall, sorry, there's no bright spot at the other side of the wall. In terms of the direct detection experiments, the ones that are looking for an annual modulation in the signal because of the fact that the Earth is going around the Sun, they are indeed actually seeing some signal. Unfortunately, their results contradict the results of other experiments, so this matter is still up for investigation. New experiments are out to try and resolve this matter. With regards to the indirect detection of dark matter, where we're looking at regions such as the central bulge of the galaxy, where possibly dark matter particles may be annihilating each other and producing some radiation that we can detect. There has been some signal uh, coming from the central bulge of our galaxy. However, there are other explanations too of that phenomenon, and so we aren't quite clear whether we have seen the dark matter yet. So where do we go from here? We're building bigger and more sensitive experiments to try and detect the dark matter. And we hope that in the next 10 or 20 years, we'll finally come back and talk to the community and say, we've discovered the dark matter particle. However, if in the next 20 years we do not find the dark matter particle, then it will requir require a major paradigm shift in our understanding of dark matter. And then the hope will be that some new uh, innovative theory or idea will dictate to us or will indicate to us some new avenues to explore. And finally, we will discover the elusive dark matter. Thank you.